Today, I want to talk to you about salicylate toxicity. After each question, pause the video for five seconds before answering. This will tell you how much you know. Let's begin. This is a 23-year-old female who was brought to the emergency department because her boyfriend states that she took half bottle of aspirin. Here's my first question to you. How did the patient present to the ER? The patient was brought to the ER in a state of hyperventilation. Next question. Do you know why the patient was hyperventilating? The patient was hyperventilating because aspirin stimulates the respiratory center in the medulla oblongata. Next question. As a result of hyperventilating, what acid-base disturbance would occur? Hyperventilation would result in the blowing off of carbon dioxide, which would cause respiratory alkalosis. Next question. Is there any other acid-base disturbance that would occur? Yes, metabolic acidosis. As salicylate is absorbed by the cells, it affects mitochondrial function and patients go into anaerobic respiration and develop lactic acidosis. The patient was also hypotensive. Here are some signs and symptoms of aspirin toxicity in general. Name at least four symptoms with mild toxicity. Mild toxicity can result in nausea, vomiting, significant hyperventilation, headache, confusion, dizziness, and tinnitus. Name at least four symptoms with severe toxicity. Severe toxicity may result in dyspnea, aspiration, restlessness, delirium, hyperthermia, seizure, high anion gap metabolic acidosis, hypokalemia, hypoglycemia, cerebral edema, and death. Which condition can occur in children due to aspirin? In children, Ray's syndrome, which is a fatty liver, which prevents hepatic function and causes encephalopathy. Salicylate exists in the blood in both ionized as well as uncharged forms. Acidemia shifts salicylate from its ionized to unionized form, making it more lipophilic and allowing increased penetration into the central nervous system. Volume status and electrolyte monitoring are paramount as brain glucose utilization increases in the setting of aspirin toxicity. There is also a shift of fluid from the vasculature, which may result in hypotension, cerebral edema, and pulmonary edema. Let's talk about aspirin toxicity treatment. What type of urine do you want this patient to have? Alkalization of the urine with bicarbonate using 3 amps of 50 milli equivalent in 1 liter of D5W is the treatment of choice. The kidneys cannot excrete aspirin unless the urine is alkaline. If the urine is acidic, aspirin will not be excreted. In addition to activated charcoal, what else could be used for the bowel?
activated charcoal and or bowel irrigation are recommended in both acute and chronic ingestion because of extended release preparations available on the market. Here's the next question. Why should activated charcoal and bowel irrigation be used with caution in an altered patient? This has to be used with caution in patients who are altered to prevent aspiration pneumonia. Maintaining an alkaline pH is important to avoid central nervous system toxicity. This can be achieved by increasing the minute ventilation to avoid carbon dioxide retention. Next question. What other treatment option is there for aspirin toxicity? Hemodialysis is an efficient treatment of aspirin toxicity. Indications for hemodialysis are as follow. Number one. Aspirin levels in acute ingestion of 100 mg per DL with or without symptoms. Number two, aspirin levels in chronic ingestion of 40 mg per DL with or without symptoms. Number three, any neurotoxicity such as tinnitus, coma, or seizure with any level in the serum. Number four, renal failure, as the drug needs to be excreted by the kidney. Number five, acute pulmonary edema. Number six, cardiovascular compromise, including volume overload. And lastly, hemodialysis does not only clear the drug from circulation, but also restores the internal acid base and electrolyte balance. Here's another question for you. Where is salicylate derived from? It is derived from the willow tree bark. Next question. How does aspirin work? It is a cyclooxygenase or COX-1 inhibitor. It binds irreversibly to the enzyme. It also irreversibly blocks thromboxane A2 on platelets, therefore preventing platelet aggregation. Next question. How does aspirin affect pregnancy and breastfeed? Aspirin can both cross the blood-brain barrier and can be expressed in breast milk. Our patient did fine. Serial aspirin levels were drawn, which showed a decreasing level. The case was also reported to poison control. Well, thanks for watching. Please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. I wish you well. Good night.